Welcome. This is Unfolding, the show where I unfold creative business minds. My name is Margot Pfann, and now I just want you to sit back and enjoy the show. So, welcome back. Today we are speaking to Rob Middleton. He is the former ECD of Astro. Uh, it, for those of you who do not know Astro, Astro is the, the largest paid TV network in Asia. And uh, the way I got to know Rob was, what was it, like 10 years ago? Yeah, Must 10, have been years, 10 ago, years ago. Yeah. Right? And you actually hired my form, like me, my partner, our former company, to rebrand 50 of your own channels. That's and right. I know you have... And the, the, what, I know, it's, 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 it's unfathomable, like right? We've got, we had this... Uh, it's it it Astro is a huge still is I mean Asia's largest pay TV platform but it it covers movies and uh, you know radio and everything else it's got 187 channels and of those 187 channels over 80 of them are Astro owned channels Astro their own branded channels so we have to design the channels we have to promote the channels we have to promote the content we have to do whatever and so but the reason that they have so many is that in Malaysia which is it's a weird setup here. As opposed to other parts in Asia, uh, Malaysia has no one pure ethnic group period that's dominant. So we have uh, we have Malays, and so uh, yeah. and of the Malays that they make up sixty percent of the population. Half of them are you know very stringent, believe in uh, you know more religious based than than others that are more worldly thinking. And so of those, then there's different age groups and brackets and other things like that. And then there's a few things that bring them all together, humor and, you know, films and things. And then of course we have Tamil, uh, which is South Indian, uh, not North Indian. So, uh, and so, and on top of that, we have uh, a Chinese population that's divided into uh, Cantonese, Mandarin, and uh, Hokkien. So those are three different languages that you're dealing with there. And then on top of that, we have all of the, 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 the normal stuff that takes place. So, um, you know, your normal sports and things like that as well that we look after. So yeah. I remember there was, we, we also had to, to do everything for Indian cultures too, right? You, you served, yeah, like the Astro channel, it's also served like Indian, um, like Indian people, yeah, yeah, like the, it's yeah, Tamil broadcast. So we, we, we did a lot of stuff for Tamil people, yeah. but at the same time, in addition to that, we also had, uh, we, we do uh, a lot of Hindi content because, and Hindi is not for Hindi, the yeah. Tamil Indian population. Hindi is actually for, enjoyed by everybody else, as is Korean. Um, and uh, the uh, Chinese stuff has actually blown up in the last few years. So especially for uh, uh, mainland uh, uh, costume and period dramas that they actually have, that they're on the coattails oh, yeah. of the Korean stuff that's taking place. So now everybody's watching Korean and they're watching Chinese. And so it, it's just this weird thing going back and forth. It's lovely. It's great. Uh, but, you know, nowadays, you know, since the 10 years that you've been there, of course, you know, streaming and everything else has exploded. Uh, Astro has changed its management uh, to something that's a little bit more, you know, not as forward thinking as before. And so uh, uh, they're in a little bit of trouble with some things. Uh, and so channels are being, you know, tried out left, right and center. There's a lot of uh, uh, streaming services you can get on your phone here now. There's a lot of... Uh, um, uh, VPN usage so that you can uh, pick up anything you want pretty much from around the world. Um, there's uh, piracy was an issue. Uh, it, it was a, quite a heavy, heavy issue. And it's not resolved itself, but because there's now so much choice. Now, you know, now that you've got everything out there constantly all the time, uh, some that costs, some that doesn't cost, plus all the fast channels are out there. Piracy is down uh uh, quite a bit, really? but not because nice. of anybody's efforts to stop piracy. It's just yeah. that everybody's got so much other stuff to actually go in and look after. That's right. Awesome. So yeah, it's, it's like the more choices you have, the less choices you make. Right. So, uh, it's, it's the weird awesome. parrot. Yeah. It's the, it's the paradox of choice. So perfect introduction. Thank you. Because what I wanted to talk to you about today is multicultural teams. And the reason why I think you're the perfect person to talk about building creative teams really mm -hmm. is because you you're a foreigner like you're an expat in asia i think like over you you've been there uh, there for over 30 years oh, yeah, now, yeah, right? 35 years yeah 35 i'm afraid with and, the little weird mustache thing there like i don't know why that exists that shouldn't be there but still nonetheless you, well 
I'll try to fix it. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> and and one of one of the things is like you're the most smart, you're the most humble, um, empathic, and smartest guy that I've met uh. in the industry, and that means a lot. And working with you, like I could feel like this humbleness, not only uh, towards uh, your bosses and, and us as a vendor, but really to everyone in your team, no matter how young they were. Mm -hmm. I've experienced that when we walked by your people and you always had a minute for, for everyone, how, like, what's like my question here. It's, it's not uh, a secret sauce. It's, it's actually, it's pretty easy. Uh, there's in, in my experience, uh, out here with watching other people at, uh, or my experiences with them at, uh, different television groups or advertising agencies or production places, whatever, there seems to be two different kinds of creative directors. There's, uh, the, the, the a-hole kind, which, uh, is somebody that's, you know, uh, who's weirdly sycophantic to clients and that sort of stuff. But at the same time, uh, feels that his underling should also be sycophantic to him or her, uh, and that they right. lash out at people. They don't give them an opportunity to grow. They, uh, do things in a particular way that is very rigid and stylized. They're not, t they're not pushing anybody's, uh, you know, getting people to grow anyway, they're making them do something that they may not actually want to do. And, and, or yeah, they're not, they're not being allowed to grow through the, whatever they're actually making. Um, and it's always negative, 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 negative. No, don't do that. Do this, do this, you know, don't take a, ah, we can find somebody else yeah. to do that. There's, and then the other kind, which is I'm trying to emulate is, uh, the guy that, uh, the first one I had was a guy called, uh, Clark Donnelly back in Canada. He was my creative director that, uh, he, right from the word go, it didn't matter who you were on the crew. It didn't matter who you were in the building. He was always, you know, uh, encouraging you, you know, to, uh, to come mm -hmm. up with different things, to do whatever. He always had the time of day for you. Uh, and it, it just through, you know, that constant, you know, uh, not fatherly thing, but I mean, through that constant, you know, feeling that it was okay to, uh, to try things out and do whatever you just sort of gave more, you, you know, pushed yourself a little bit more, you, you know, would be working late nights, you'd be working weekends, you'd be doing all these other things, like testing out different ideas, you'd be doing more research, you'd be, you know, having more fun, you'd be doing some tests, you'd, you know, you'd be starting to mm -hmm. sweat over the little things, right? You'd put, be putting a lot more blood, sweat and tears in it. And it wasn't because that was being demanded. That was because you started to care more about what you were doing right. because somebody allowed you to grow into what that was. And so, and every step of the way you're learning as you go along. So I try to uh, emulate that as well with the people that I work with um, that, you know, it's, I, I don't dictate to them what to do. I, we work together in trying to get something done. I pump in a bunch of suggestions. I show some, a lot of examples, uh, I, mind you, I mean, I've had had to close the door a few times for, you know, that's, that's way out in left field. That's not going to work because of, and we'll save it for something else, or this won't work because of, but I mean, as long as you're, you know, showing them, you know, where the, where the path is that you want to go, how fast they want to drive, whatever they want to drive to get there is, is fine. So it just, and, and, and I think, uh, by and large, creative people, I mean, the, the word you used humble, right? so the, a lot of creative people that I've met are uh, naturally humble, right? especially in the, in the, uh, mm -hmm. in the, 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 uh, the industries that I've been working in, or, you know, with the, the promotions teams and the, uh, that kind of teams themselves, because they, they are, they're not doing it for, uh, uh, well, they're not doing it for money. That's one thing. I mean, it's not an industry you're going to make a lot of money right. out of. Uh, but they're doing it for the growth and they're sort of doing it for, you know, trying to bang it off each other. And if one of their coworkers sees it and compliments them, that's, that's gold, you know, saying, oh man, that's really fantastic. Ah, they feel really good about it. They don't go out bragging and showing off. If you're a bragger and a show off, you're not going to, you know, you're going to not going to last long in, 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 in that kind of team no, situation, yes. you're going to be moving on into something else. What I love what you just said, and this is so true, I never, but I never articulated that before or heard it as being articulated is craves don't make it for money. We all know that, but we do that because we want to grow, right? We want to grow in the skill set. Yep. We want to grow in, in the understanding of everything. So I love that. Yeah. How did you foster that? Well, the, 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 it's just, uh, you know, being there, going through it myself and then, and getting the opportunity to foster quite early. I mean, I, uh, uh, when I first got to Asia, I helped launch MTV, 
uh, MTV Asia way back in 91 mm-hmm. when I was only nine years old, back when MTV was good, right? When, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, it was fantastic. And then uh, 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 three years later, uh, Murdoch, uh, you know, the lovely guy and his lovely family, they bought the, uh, the, the satellite platform uh, in Hong Kong that was that we had MTV at. And then it came down, but because the people working at MTV couldn't, I got separated away and they said, hey, uh, we want to launch uh, a, 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 a different music channel against MTV and it's going to really, you know, to threaten them up. And it may say it might stay, it might not, we might use it as a bargaining chip, but here's some money and, you know, go get your friends and go make a channel. So, uh, in, in, uh, five or six weeks, we created this great channel we call channel V lots of stories behind it that I can tell you all about later on. But, uh, so we launched that and then, uh, yeah, uh and that was history was made. We, MTV got kicked out. We came on the, platform we then we created ones for india itself specifically created one for china itself specifically then we created another one for the philippines we created another one for australia another one for thailand another one for korea so we had this giant network of music channels that were communicating working with each other back and forth uh and the reason it was called channel v originally was they were they were going to be working with viva from germany uh which you know ah. that didn't work out at all but uh they looked at Viva as a model because they were the one in Germany that was kicking MTV's butt, right? So at the time, yeah. so that was that. And then from there, I, uh, and so for all of those, I got to build uh, creative teams in all of those different countries. So I got to, you know, build a creative team in India and uh, Australia and, you know, Thailand and, uh, you know, the Philippines and all of those sort of things and just, and, and build them through the, the focus of what the brand was uh, and the tone of voice and the idea of who they are and the presentation of what it is and getting their heads around the perception of, you know, what that, uh, that brand was yes. all about and what is, you know what it was supposed to be saying and what its personality was and how he was going to be communicating with people. And each one of those different places has a different, you know, idea of, uh, you know, exactly what it is, but they were always sort of a fluid, I, you know, a sameness that went across. As soon as you saw a spot, you knew, you know, that was one of our spots, but you know, it, it put it into a different environment. And so it was a logo that was constantly changing uh, things that, you know, it, it was one of those things that, you know, we were very lucky to build it from the ground up, right? So it wasn't MTV. The, the previous one was MTV coming into Asia and everybody wanting MTV. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. But then MTV coming into Asia and telling people, look, at this is how it is. This is who we are. With the with the Channel V one, we turned it around and basically said, you know, this is what we want to oh. be. And we want to build it up nice. from, from going in from there. And so we were locally made, but we just happened to be of a high world-class standard. And from there, oh, people yeah. really embraced it. And so the Channel V Thailand, you know, 40% of the music or more than 40% of the music uh, eventually was all Thai music, all Thai artists. It's all in Thai, you know, and then it just built up the music video industry and everything else there. Same thing in the Philippines, same thing wherever we went, you know, India as well. And then MTV eventually came back and then they had, you know, too much choice. And so, yeah, there you go. But it was fun. It was great. And so that, that, that was the big training ground for that. And then uh, I love that. So, so you you built that that those channels. You built them up. It's like an internal thing, right? It's not like uh, uh, MTV coming with a Western ideology. Yeah, yeah. The whole bit. I'd, I'd write. You know, I'd go in there, work with everybody, figure out. You know, what the strategy was going to be. I'd write a Bible yeah. for you know who it is and what we're all about. I had a general bi- nice. Bible for the, the 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 network that I'd written for it. You know the idea of you know how it is and why we do things this place. And, you know you know where it is to yeah. grow and you know what we want from you. Uh, and so we're looking for, and 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 most of the people that you know were involved then. You know they've all gone on to be young young filmmakers or uh, you know uh, uh, animators uh, that are great. They, if fil- you know movie makers or you know uh, commercial directors and that sort of stuff. So everybody's still you know uh, taking that style and they've moved on from there. And it's it's been great. That's amazing. Yes. Yeah. So um, question that that comes to mind is you like what's like. I remember like when, when we, when we worked for you, that you were very keen that I go out there on the street, meet people, go to museums, kind of like get a sense of the culture. So what is it that, that Westerners can learn when they want, or what did you learn 
leading Asian teams. Well, what's the huge? What's the big difference here? The the the, the weird thing is like uh, the stereotypical American coming in and wanting a cheeseburger, and then you know when people don't understand what it is, just saying it louder, cheeseburger or whatever. But <laughs> that doesn't work. You know, you're just you know going through there. If you're going to go in to a culture, uh-huh. immerse yourself in it, right? Put both feet in there. Yeah. You can you can take parts of you know what you are and mix it in there as well, but. But actually appreciate that. Don't put up a stone wall of, oh, my God, you know, look at this poverty, you know, whatever, you know, there's still people there, you know, it's still whatever you you find. It. There's, and there's humor and everything. You know, what's funny, what's getting by, you know, politics. How's that go? Learn as much as you can. Just have some fun with it. Yeah. And plus, you're going to have great conversation stuff as well. So and then people are going to be sitting there. You'd be talking to them and they're going to say something about some old legend or whatever, and you're just going to, you're going to hang on to that and go, what, what is that all about? And you just start bringing it out and people are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So does everybody know about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, uh, cause you and I, we grew up with, uh, certainly from these different places, we grew up with, with different bedtime stories and, uh, different legends and, uh, different hockey star, or, you know, d- different sports stars and, you know, different family histories. This is a whole new place that you're going into, right? So that, that, you know, India, for example, you're going in to a place that loves cricket, but at the same time, you know, uh, loves, you know, different things from all over the planet as well, you know, uh, that, you know, has a completely different idea of, you know, what the temperature of food should be and how long that should actually stay in your system. Uh, that are the greatest, oh, humor spicy. Planet, you know, okay. uh, Thailand, uh, you know, incredible sense of humor, uh, as far as it goes, you know, really, really high, high level laugh out loud, uh, uh, ideas and stuff that goes through there as well. So, uh, as a Westerner going into those cultures and I'm sure it's everywhere else, don't go in with preconceived notions. You've got, you know, an idea, understanding of who you are. I had a good friend uh, uh, who, who passed away recently, but uh, he was the epitome of it because he was teaching. He's a was a wonderful Indian animator that I used to work with, and he went on to become like uh, the the CD of Disney as well. Uh, and, and then he uh, he would get this gig from this fellow in. Um, wherever the Kardashian family's from. And it was always the joke there, the, uh, you know, uh, whatever. It, it's, it's a- No idea. Pardon me? Don't ask me where they come from, yeah, where they are from. I, mean, I don't know. No, it's like uh, Armenia or something like that. So uh, it could okay. be, you know, it, it, it was something like Armenia, a country that, you know, uh, corruption was a bit here and there and do whatever. And so the uh, okay. there was this one fellow who was uh, sort of a, a criminal big guy uh, he was upset with the education system uh, for some reason. And so he built a, uh, uh, a bit of an institute, just a small place where anybody and everybody that wants to explore their creative arts could go and they could learn. Yeah. It didn't matter what your age was. It didn't matter what, you know, your, your background was. It didn't matter, you know, uh, um, uh, what your education level was or your skill level was. And so he invited Arn- this guy to come out uh, and teach this class for a couple of weeks um, on basic animating, you know, on a Mac, on a laptop and, you know, bringing people out there and doing whatever. So people would come, he supplied, um, some Mac. So this guy, uh, uh, had put up the slip, he brought this fellow in, he sat down and he had a, he had said he had a class of about 25, uh, and they were not necessarily all young people. Uh, there were some that were quite young. He said there were some that were like 12, 14, uh, but most were 18 to 25, but he did have a couple of students that were, you know, fifties and that sort of stuff. But the thing was that uh, he he speaks English and Hindi, and nobody in Armenia speaks or none of the class spoke English or or Hindi, uh, and so they had you know basically yes. communication problems to deal with, uh, other yeah. styles to actually go with. So he would show them how things actually work and do whatever, and so uh, uh, they everybody started picking up on it. A couple of people left because they realized it wasn't for them, but others really sort of enjoyed it. And then as they were enjoying it more people were started joining the class and they were telling their friends and they were coming in, they were coming in. And so he'd started, you know, with a relatively small class, it came to the point that they couldn't fit anybody else into the room. Uh, And so, and, you know, by the end of the two weeks, all these kids, all these people had made their own animations about different things with audio. And uh, he showed me a few and they were astonishing, right? They're, they're really, really good, you know? And, uh, and so he went back, he, he made it a regular thing that every year he likes to go back and uh, and hang out and do that class again. For I two remember, weeks. So, I, I remember that that yeah. spirit when, when we were, were there. It's like 
you people that were, re were really fast and actually executing stuff. Like wherever my freelancers over here in Germany and Europe, they were, they want to think two weeks to think, and then they came back with something and you people just did it. Like, well, that wasn't amazing. And I, I can relate what to the story because it's like, yes, it, it's a, the work culture and, and the, and the, the experience working with, with anyone in Asia is, 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 is different. It's so it's fast. Yeah. Well, every country, every country is a little bit different, but I mean, yes, the, the, the work cultures are, you, you have to get by that. The, uh, uh, well, the work culture in a lot of places is, you know, uh, uh, very strict and you know, some are very nine to five, some are more open, some are, you know, uh, lackluster, some are, you know, a little bit, a little bit, whatever, uh, when you're building a creative team, it's usually the same all the way through, right? So uh, creative people, as you were saying earlier on, they share things that go through. Creative people are, you know, they're, they're smart and naive at the same time. They're, yeah. they're passionate about, you know, what they do. Uh, they, uh, they, uh, uh, they're playful, they're funny. They're, uh, they're introverts and extroverts, weirdly enough, at the same time, you know, they're right on that line that it does things about it. They're, they, they have loads of energy that they put into different things they do. And that loads of energy pays off. They don't mind working, mm -hmm. you know, longer hours and doing stuff as long as, you know, they're seeing the growth of whatever it is and they're getting, you know, uh, you know, some really something out of it. Right. And they're getting to see what it is. And so again, if you're dealing with a creative director, that is a dick that's on their head, you know, you're just going to get nine to five mentality. Of them. You're not going to get yep. any blood, sweat and tears. You're not mm -hmm. going to get any extra effort. Right. So, with those other people, you know, uh, that what you get is you get that little piece of extra, the, the thing, the unsaid thing, that little piece of soul that's right there. You know, there's a reason that people talk about, you know, Mona Lisa or, you know, the Da Vinci or whatever, whatever, still to this day, you know, it's just that little extra bit of, you know, something soul that's actually put in there and, 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 and take it across. And so uh, that's that from the effort that actually is going into doing it, not just stealing somebody else's work like advertising yeah, just don't, just... don't get me started on advertising agencies it's it's um <laughs> so actually that's a good 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 uh, cue here why did you because we were a small shop why did you choose to work with a small shop instead of working with a big agency back then well um there were uh few things it was mostly trust to be honest with you i had uh i narrowed down you know uh, uh, um, a big group I, because i wasn't necessarily paying for it i had to get money coming in from all the different channels i had to get a lady you remember justina as I well remember. she was yeah. one of the other people involved so all of these people you know involved and so i had to get them on board before what it was going to be and i had to hold their hand through the the idea of what it was going to be and so they you know, some people put up this local agency to do, and then this advertising agency to do. And it's just, it's just, it wasn't that their work was subpar. It's just that I had no trust in, 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 in mm -hmm. what they were going to be bringing to the table above uh -huh. what we we're going to ask. So, uh, it, we had done a couple of things with these other places. And so we gave them a brief and what you got back was pretty much yes. oh, what the it. brief was. Right. So, so yeah. in working with, uh, guys like yourself, Here's what we wanted to, here's what the plan is. You took that and you just, you cranked it up even more and said, okay, now we got you covered. We understand what you actually want, but how about that. Yeah. if we just, you know, you know, we do this and it was and everybody's holy shit, this is fantastic. So, so what, what I had when, uh, when we were looking at, at who it would be, we had three or four different places from around the world that we knew that could be, you know, that kind of thing. And it's just, uh, what you guys came back with in, uh, 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 from your original brief, that was it right off the bat. So everybody, you know, we didn't have to look at anything else. As soon as everybody saw that, that was fine. Awesome. That was it. They were locked in. And so that was very happy. But again, I mean, that was all of that stuff came through in. Thanks in so much. You, that uh, actually means do. a lot for me. And then thanks for that testimonial. But we, that was like, it was an amazing time back then. But, and, and I remember like, you are not very keen about working with big agencies, right? Why? No. Why? No, especially advertising agencies. Because, well, you know, 
because I want to, I want to say words, but I don't think I can say that if small <laughs> children are watching. The uh, agencies here, at least around here, are, um, especially when you're dealing with an uh, advertising agency. Advertising agencies, traditionally here, they, uh, in the words of George Carlin, they sell things that people don't need, don't want, can't afford uh, by preying on people's fears and insecurities, right? And that's it. That's the formula that they use. And that's it. If, you know, if I wear these jeans, my butt's going to look great. And Tommy's going to invite me to the dance. If I drive this car, women are not going to notice that I'm bald and I might actually get to have sex with somebody. So that's it. The, the, that's pretty much advertising agencies. But nowadays, you know, as it, and, and agencies are still huge. They still have a lot of people. They put, they put most of their effort into their pitch to, to get your business. And then once that's done, because oh. they're a business, they're moving on to the next guy to get their business, their pitch. So the, the, the things going through there. So, uh, and, and what I found with agencies themselves is they don't really do any of the work. You know, they, uh, they, uh, they may have a copywriter or whatever, but I mean, um, when they're actually doing graphic work or graphic samples, they're going out and hiring a freelancer to take care of that, or they're hiring a freelance copywriter or they're hiring, you know, whatever. Um, so, the, you know, and, and mostly, the ideas that they come up with are, they're not coming up with at all. They're just looking around the planet, studying YouTube or seeing the latest reel of shots or whatever, and then stealing uh, uh, bits and pieces here and there, or just taking a direct uh, spot and then, you know, saying that this is the kind of thing that we're going to do for you. And then you have to break it down for them and then you have to say why it wouldn't work, what's wrong with it, you know, uh, how that doesn't actually fit with this culture, which is weird to say to an advertising agency that's from that culture that doesn't understand why you can't yeah. do this particular thing there and because of, and why it doesn't work. All it looks good on is, is the agency's real, but it doesn't do anything for, you know, uh, pushing, you know, uh, yeah. uh, uh, the brand's positioning or, you know, you know, or, or anything. It's not, it's not through that, uh, positioning of, of who they are. It's not, you know, that, that thing at all. Agencies are scum. Agencies overcharge. Agencies are slow. You just said, you know, if you go out and you ask a guy to do something, It'll take two weeks. If we're working with an agency, sometimes, you know, uh, at Astro, our marketing department would have a retainer with an agency and you tell them, okay, you know, get the, if they're going to do these graphics, they come back and they'd show what they're going to do. You make suggestions for how you change mm -hmm. it to make it better and how it would fit better. And, you know, they've just taken this from, you know, yeah. uh, these guys in Hong Kong. Uh, and then they've taken this other thing because it's a, uh, it's a, it's a backward uh, uh, panel from, uh, after effects that they've just taken and cleaned up, which is, you know, it's kind of cheap. So don't use that and do that. And then they give it back and it'd be something that you got, you would be able to do in two hours. No problem. If you took a coffee break <laughs> for about 20 minutes along the way, you know, and, and stuff. So, yeah. but it takes the agency two weeks to come back. And so when they come back, it's the same thing and, they, and they're not doing it anyway. They're giving it to somebody else. So my thing is that all of the people that we create, we, we help yeah. bring up in these creative teams, they do all the jobs of uh, an advertising agency anyway, and a production company. They're writers, producers, directors, editors, animators, maybe not great at it, but I mean, they're, they're, they're learning and pushing themselves along the way. An agency will, you know, if they're working with a bank, I've worked with a bank recently where um, you see a template that uh, these, these graphic guys are actually having to work with, the graphic kids in, in, in the bank's creative area. And that's come from an advertising agency uh, who doesn't, explain anything about it, why it's that particular way, what the, the, the gradient means, why that particular color, why anything actually goes through. It's just, it's locked in. That's it. That's all you can use. You don't understand. Plus the agency themselves, perhaps they don't even know because it was mm -hmm. done by a third party anyway. Right. And a lot of it, uh, had to be fixed by the, uh, the creative in-house team in order to utilize it for uh, different formats, right. From, you know, uh, portrait and vertical and, so social media yeah, two things I'm, i've heard like first of all and it's just a, a, a quickly for for the audience uh clients like you and you you like you you run a big team a big a big network you are the kind of clients my audience wants and what what you just said is like uh, big tv channels don't necessarily want to work with agencies but sometimes they don't have a choice because creative because creative, yeah, so the, the, the small shops Absolutely. don't just yeah. don't don't talk the way they they, they need to. Or they, they don't just what is it? 
Well, it's, it's, but it's also, it's, 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 again, it's, it's being in the right place at the right time. There's, there's a lot of connection stuff as well. So the agencies through the four A's or five A's or whatever they've got through that whole, you know, uh, uh, ecosystem that they have of working with each other. And plus it's not that big a business. So people skip around and do whatever, but they're still overly paid and they, and, and they under deliver, you know, constantly all the time. That's, that's their mantra. They shouldn't exist. They should so, be, they should be, you know, spiraling around the toilet room right now, into, but uh, into... that's a good question. That's an excellent question as well. You know, so, uh, you know, uh, God, I had, uh, uh, a couple, um, that I helped out for, uh, just doing a voice for their demo reel because they had, they put out on social media, you know, hey, we're just a mom and pop shop, <laughs> literally mom and pop, you know, I'm this, that next thing. Da, 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 we're just looking for this kind of business. This is what we're going to do. And, uh, da, da, da. And, I, and I wrote them and I said, Hey, you know, you look great. You know, you, you're obviously very graphics orientated. There's something wrong with your audio that's coming through. You know, there's a bad mix that's actually in there. There's two little effects that don't quite make sense. Let me fix it for you. And so, you know, we did uh, give it to them. No, no charge, just had some fun. And then since then, from time to time, they've been kind enough to, you know, we've got this gig. Uh, would you mind, you know, uh, helping us write it? Or we've got this gig. Would you mind, you know, just doing a voiceover or something? So kindness, you know, helps getting through there. But that's not, not going to work for everybody. Um, yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, getting the word out, how do you actually do that? Uh, and especially nowadays with uh, a lot of things that are, uh, suffering too. You see, you know, with AI, for example, with, uh, you know, it's affected audio houses out here. Uh, it certainly affects voiceover guys anyway, that are out here. Um, it, it, it's, it's not a situation of, oh, they don't do Tamil. They don't do changes. They do. Uh, they, you know, they pick it up, put it through there. It's just, it's not quite there yet with, uh, uh, with those particular languages, as far as, you know, the emphasis or the, the smoothness or the, the suave or, sophisticated elements that they want to put through there, but it's certainly there. And so people can get very cheap work, mm -hmm. but they don't virtually pay anything for it. <clears throat> Same thing for music, for music houses. It's very tough too, because now there's a lot of stuff that's actually out there that's that AI can actually sample and bring in and do for you. Uh, and then in starting and coming in with animation, there's, you know, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Huggy face or whatever the, uh, the AI uh, sample were. Yeah, you can you you basically write a, a short story. It'll give you a graphic novel of your short story within fifteen seconds. And if you want to animate it, you have to go into yeah. you know various details of what it'd be. And some of it is not <laughs> terrible, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's getting there too, right? So it's tough for everybody going around there. But so uh, not to scare anybody with the uh, the small shops and that sort of stuff. Uh, I think it's the small shops are the ones that are actually going to uh, do better. I mean, they have to present, of course, they have to work with mm -hmm. agencies. Of course, they have to do some stuff. Agencies are the ones that are going to get, you know, all the bread, uh, the, 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 the bread and butter work for the time being for whatever. But there's nothing wrong with going and approaching um, you don't potential have, clients that are actually out you there. Can, and you can't go around the, the middleman. Yeah, Whereas in a small me. shop, you can, you can approach big, agents, uh, big, big TV channels. Mm. Of course you can. You can. You can. You, it, all they can do is say no, right? So you know, you put something out there. You've got a demo reel, or you've got an idea of what you're going to be, or you've got a awesome. website, yeah. samples, or whatever it's going to be. The agency is going to steal it anyway. <laughs> so you know, love you it. might as well. I love it. Know, okay, just find out. You know, there's a there's every country puts out a list, or actually in, in Asia, there's a there's a, a big one that's put out every year for all the different agencies, production houses, and that sort of stuff, and who's who, and that sort of thing. So you just have to track down their email and find out because every a a agency is going to have a, you know, a talent yeah. producer or a commercial producer or a client, you know, services guy. You just get a hold of those people and just send them mass emails. It's going to take you like two days of, you know, putting out through that. But usually from that two days, you at least will just start getting you know, some stuff back. And maybe some of the agency without using you will say, yeah, we really like your stuff. It's great. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, keep in touch. Here's my, you know, whatever. So at least you've got something that's getting you through the door to start that way. Right through there, but uh, social social media wise, putting it out there, having fun with it, whatever, get yourself involved with all different societies from not Promax because that doesn't exist anymore, but I mean, uh, things like that, you know, with uh, you know, uh, the international creative community of you know, getting your uh, getting your stuff out there. And I go and and I, as you said, I mean, everybody's humble, they don't like you know, you know, shouting for themselves and do whatever, but I mean, they've got to put themselves into different environments where the other people are going to shout on their behalf saying, I saw this. This is great. Uh, take a look.
Rob, one more it. thing I wanted to talk to you about, and that, that ties back to what you, what we have what you said before. You're now consulting like banks and big big companies, big brands on. Well, it's not bank. big. I mean, I've got uh, I, I've got a, a television group I'm doing next month. This based out of Singapore. They only have wow. six channels, and and they're on. It's it's the reverse, right? So they have six channels, but they're on um, all these different platforms throughout Asia yes. that all speak all these different languages. So it's sort of reverse engineering, you know, what I know and what I do for them to figure out how they can uh, be better uh, at uh, at their presentation, at their uh, at, uh, the perception of who they are and, you know, they, everything, you know, and that all comes through their positioning, but then how they look and, and how their tone of voice and where they play their spots. Again, like I've, I've been monitoring them here and uh they've got a few issues of uh where and when they're placing you know their their messages and because who those messages are for it's unclear right so you, it's not like you you need to know yes. who you're speaking to what and how you're actually speaking to them you need to know where these art people are you need to know you know uh, what time of day you're going to be talking to them because the audience has changed throughout the course of the day they change throughout the course of the week you're not the same person on monday that you are on friday or saturday you know your 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 your, your content and your your product is going to be changing as well that goes through there so even if there's only like 20 percent of your stuff that fits the idea of who you think you actually are keep promoting it in that style you know so uh, and then look at it in that particular way. But then how does that translate to uh, somebody in Thailand? How does that translate to somebody in India? And again, India is a place with, you know, 280 languages as well. So, I mean, you, you, I, I, well, not quite that many, but I mean, quite a few. So, uh, and if their platform is in the same, if they're not changing their spots within there, then they should be creating particular spots to run cross channel on those platforms mm -hmm. that tell, so you, know, you know, things that are, specifically targeted to those audiences and of course with their social media that's targeted so you're not for those only audiences creating you're not only building platforms. creative teams you really consult those channels those brands on how they resonate with the markets well yeah but well see that's the step in that's my dream yeah so uh my first thing is uh, i've got a group meeting with their all of their promo teams their marketing teams their creative teams uh and their channel managers and then through that uh, we're just going to do a full day of, you know, walking through, this is, you know, the kind of things you're actually doing. This is the kind of things you sh that we can make it easier. This is the kind of stuff we can be doing to make it better. This is not going to cost you anything to do. We can, if you don't, you know, want to, you know, if you don't think it's going to work, would you be willing to do an experiment? Let's try this and we'll try that. Uh, I'll help you do this. I'll help you do that. But then let's look at, you know, where you're actually getting feedback from, how, what kind of feedback actually is it? You know, uh, what is the goal mm -hmm. that you're actually trying for? Are you trying to get onto more platforms? Are you trying to get more viewers? Are you trying to talk to advertisers? You know, all of those kind of things. Let's think about those. Let's break it apart. And let's, you know, as opposed to trying to do everything at once, let's do one thing really, really, really well and then see how that works and then something else. And then for each of the different countries, let's try something okay. as well. We don't have to do all the countries at once. We can start with one and let's just yes. experiment here and see how that actually works. So for them, my experiences in promotions and and, and, and filmmaking and, and and creating spots uh, and creating channels and personalities and that sort of stuff, but stuff that resonates and speaks to speaks with viewers, not anything that talks down to people. That's why you have to know who your audience actually is and what time of day it actually is as well, because you want to be able to you know, talk to people about you know you know what they're feeling at that particular time. Plus, you know, it's, it's affinity as well. So I mean, if, if you're if you're watching a crime show, you don't want to insert promotional spots talking about some kiddie program because that just feels weird and reminds people that they're watching television. You're talking to a predisposed audience anyway that's already watching your content in your channel. So they'd be interested in, you know, more similar content or other stuff that you have coming up, especially the big thing that you want, you know, be pushing you through. Not some kiddie stuff because you put in kiddie stuff there, it starts making them feel weird like a like a pedophile or something. So, you know, the, then it reminds them to, you know, they got a choice. They can change the channel, which is That's the so last thing different. you wanted to do. That's but nowadays, with no, but no, but I mean, it's not just hmm. you know linear television. But linear television—that's the weird thing. Linear television has made a huge comeback with all these fast channels yeah. that are coming through. 
India's embraced it massively. You've got tons and tons of fast channels. I don't know what it's like in Germany at the moment, but uh, out here, they're starting to pop up a lot. In Malaysia, we've got a, uh, maybe a dozen uh, that are attached to different um, uh, uh, platforms. I mean, free advertising supported television. And so uh-huh. it's like uh, they'll take, you know, uh, uh, one particular genre or even one particular show. And so you'll have, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, friends or something. So you, you'll have the friends channel and they'll just play every episode of, of friends. So as you're sitting there, you know, all day with your mouth open and stuff in your Is face with cheeseburgers. Thing? Is that a friends channel actually? Friends. Yeah. yeah. Well, they, I don't know if they have a friend's channel, but I mean, they certainly do it with a, with a lot of other content. There's a Twilight Zone channel. There's other stuff channels. So they, they play every episode of everything. But within those, they, yeah. they have commercial breaks, right? So it's linear television again. So each one of those channels is branded differently. Each one of those channels has different promotions. Each one of those channels does cross promotions for other fast channels over there. Each one of those channels does platform promotions and big marketing promotions for, for them as well to get you to buy up to other things because they also have a bunch of on-demand content that they're offering. They also have a bunch of other things that are there. So the free advertising supported TV, um, it's, it's linear television. It's, it's, it's the just way come back. in and to, so, to get people uh, subscribed to the pay, paid plans, right? Well, it is in some cases, in others, it's uh, to get people to uh, buy up for their content yeah. on, yeah. on demand or VOD or, or SVOD. So, you know, to, to get subscription again, yes, you're actually right. And that, that's, that, kind that's of... very, very true. But others are offshoots of different things. Some are very clever, like Peacock is part of NBC, which is part of something else, yeah. NBC Universal. So they all sort of work together in a nefarious way to try and get your money by seemingly offering seemingly. you free content. That's kind of what Amazon is doing but they're not, too, right? Not and we, we don't have that over here. Like we, in, in Europe, oh, yeah. it's non-existent and it's actually, not, you should actually come over and, and consult a few of those TV channels over here. Oh, well, oh yeah, get I'll me get over there, there and I will jump something. Now, Amazon is, Amazon's got uh, a few different services, but uh, for the most part, they're not doing well in some markets and doing mm. incredibly well in others. Uh, in India here, really not so good. Uh, but in uh, other places like Hong Kong, uh, Thailand, other places, fantastic. You know, and they and they have really upped their game as far as uh, some of their content is concerned. You know, uh, really, you know, uh, very high quality, short lived things. I mean, everything just like Netflix, you get two yeah. seasons of it and then it's gone. Sometimes you know, it disappeared. It's, it's... You know. uh, yeah, that, that's. You know. So they this have to make is amazing. Like you actually, yeah, you have a wealth of information, knowledge, insights around TV stations, really, and also the strategic thing. And what you just pointed out is, is so different. I mean, I'm going to get to this in the moment, but it's it's a so it's a totally different thinking and mindset. Um, like in, here, at least here in Europe, um, it's all about. It's not this intrinsic. Like we grow, we experiment. No, it's like we are this. And we want to find ourselves, so we attract others. And what you do is actually, we want to understand the, the audience. We want to see what they want. And then we grow as a channel, so we grow with the audience. So we are the audience. There you go. That's, that's right. a whole different yes. approach, but it's, it's more, much that's smaller. Right. Well, be, it, well it, but it, well, it works out here because, you know, it, television is the same everywhere. Every day is a different day, right? Every day, somebody's coming to you new. But at the same time, they know who you are. They, I was watching, you know, ProSieben <laughs> is still ProSieben, you know, but that was yesterday. Today's a new day and it's still, I'm the guy that they're going to be talking to and getting you know, involved with, you know. And so as soon as they give me some sort of presentation or build me up for something and it's, it's, it's been exaggerated or it's a bit of a lie, once you've already established that rapport as a friend, you get the same thing. Like, so, you know, once you, you know, you're lied to, or that you're cheated on or somewhere that sort of creates sort of a, mm-hmm. a, a bit of a rift in the friendship. And it's very hard to, to build that back, especially in the pay TV platforms, because people are paying for that service. And so as you're paying for that service, you're expecting, you know, uh, better quality, you're expecting, you know, uh, uh, a better result for what you are. The last thing you want to to as a, as a pay service is to be reminding people <laughs> that they're paying for that service. 
you know, which which is a mistake that you know I'm seeing out here at the place I formerly used to work at. They brought in this team from Europe, and they're like all the promotions you see. It's just you know, you know, buy up to this package and buy it for this and buy it for that, and you know, it seems like they're really. It looks desperate to be honest with you, right? And and at the same time, you just it makes you sit back and reminds you that you're already paying for this service. Yes. Do I really need this service? And and then at the same time, I've got a choice of. I don't need this for Netflix. I don't need this for Disney. I don't need this for sports. I don't need this for news. I can take the money that I'm spending there and I could be selective That's on so true. other things going through there. So I think it's kind of not, not, not a very good strategy. That's that. And there's the one thing that you can end on, right? So the, a lot of the stuff that's being done is being done through the, uh, uh, not being done from the viewer standpoint, everything you do, everything, right. Uh, the, it's gotta be done through, you know, uh, who's going to be seeing it at the end, so, you know, put yourself in their shoes. Uh, because uh, the viewers don't care how long it took to make a graphic. They don't care how complicated the shot was. They don't care about, you know, how long, you know, you know how, how the matting and, and that kind of stuff actually works. What they care about is what they're seeing right there and then what they're getting out of it and, and uh, you know, what it's enticing them to do. And so that's the thing that we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be doing, you know, this stuff where, we're communicating with the audience. We're, you know, uh, basically audience wranglers, and we're, you know, dedicated to motivating them to uh, uh, not manipulating them necessarily. We and we're not, we're 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 kind of asking them to share in an experience. Whereas an advertising agency is just trying to sell them shit, right? So we're not interested in selling them shit. We're trying mm -hmm. to sell them on the idea of an experience, and the experience is coming up in just a little little while. It's just over here. Just stay right here with us. We're going to come that experience is so, going to be happening. You know? So yeah, I see I picture the the, the Asian market as as, uh, as way more innovative, especially now in, in the recession than Europe and, and the US. So uh, and I, I know this is true. And um, what from your perspective, because you live this culture, you're in this industry, what's the future of television? Wow, excellent question. That's a hard one, man. So, you know, everybody said 10 years ago, TV was dead. Everybody said 20 years ago, radio is dead. But still, at the same time, radio is flourishing here. Right? So not flourishing, but I mean, it's still going quite hard. There's a lot of experiments with radio where you've got a completely AI radio station at the moment with AI voices and, you know, and a, a program selector that's selecting all the music. Yeah, yeah it's uh, called Fly FM, I think. Uh, and they're doing everything as an experiment, you know, and to see how people are liking it and listening to it. And their ratings are, haven't changed. Well, you know, their initial, their ratings were much higher than they had been, but it's just come down back to normal levels. But again, that, that, that's kind of it. As far as television is concerned, you know, the way things have changed mm -hmm. COVID two years ago was uh, uh, something with Fent. It was a great opportunity for people in television. If they looked at it properly, where, you know, you suddenly got an audience that's home during the daytime. Uh, but some television groups here still pushed the whole idea of prime time and they're all fighting each other for prime time with this, you know, seven o'clock to nine 30. Yeah. That's it. That's the only time that matters. No, you've got these people that are home during the daytime that are suddenly mm -hmm. home with their kids. Uh, they could be watching TV. They could be sharing some stuff. They could be, you know, watching a movie together. They could be doing whatever. And it also came out at the same time that you had uh, all of these uh, streaming services from Netflix to Disney plus and that sort of stuff offering themselves and, and the smaller guys as well, offering themselves as three months free, six months free, just give us a try. You know, after, after the end of six months, you can sign up and you can pay and you can go. So there's a massive amount of, of uh, mm -hmm. content out there in all these different places, but people were tuning into local television because they wanted to get uh, news about, you know, what was affecting them as far as COVID was concerned, yeah. you know, where, you know, what, uh, where the danger spots were, uh, when they could go outside, you know, uh, what was happening locally anywhere. So for those local television stations, some of them took it on board and really kind of cleaned up their act in the daytime and their, and their presentation and their news and their public service and everything that went with them just to create, you know, to, to, to rebond with, uh, with, uh, with the viewer potential that they actually had out there. And then, when COVID's over, they, it's all thrown away. It's all gone back to uh, to what it was. Uh, and at the same time, you've got these fast channels that are coming out. You got pay TV uh, with some of them, like uh, like the place we just talked about, that is very mercenary as far as trying to get your money. And so they're 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 bleeding a bit. But their answer for bleeding is to try and squeeze more blood mm -hmm. from the stone, which is not 
doing them anything. They should be looking at, you know, how can we, you know, uh, slow it down and change people's attitude, change people's mind. What else can we offer? What can we give them? And how can we speak to them? How can we, you know, revise that friendship and get them back on board? Uh, but at the same time, they're they're going out and they're, they're putting out uh, uh, their own versions of streaming apps, which offers the same content that they have uh, for uh, a less price, which in my mind doesn't make much sense uh, because everything's a TV, yes. right? So yeah, yes. this, that's a TV. Uh, what I'm talking to you on now is a TV. A TV is a TV. So, like, this, uh, we can, uh, it, so I remember like we, for, for you back in the days, we also built like a VOD, video on demand stuff. Uh, and is that like, would you yes. say this has a, a and w because you just said it, like you can watch it anywhere. It's not just a television screen. It's anywhere these days, this yes. video on demand. And this is what the fast channels really do, right? They, they just put out one, ch one channel where you can watch maybe friends like 24 seven. Yeah. Well, you know what you're getting. It's what you're familiar with, right? So if you're, you, you go to something like, um, uh, what can you get in Germany? Uh, Go to something like uh, mm -hmm. Pluto, Pluto TV, yeah. P-L-U-T-O, and that will have uh, 300 channels and, uh, and they'll be broken down into uh, sample channels, movie channels, entertainment channels, comedy channels, uh, uh, music channels, uh, sports channels, and that sort of stuff. So you just go through the top bar. It's a very easy EPG that they've got. And then you click on it and then it takes you down to the open menu for Uh, watching whatever so and sci-fi for example last night i was watching uh some uh a couple of episodes of, while i was sitting uh, mm. uh, my tummy's not too good so while i was getting up and going to uh, uh somewhere i was sitting and i was uh watching a couple of episodes of outer limits and okay. uh and twilight zone that i hadn't seen in a long time so but all that's there but it's advertising supported so you know uh, if you don't mind every 10 minutes that it stops for a commercial break and it sells you insurance I mean, or whatever we're, that's i mean fine. we are the older generation we are used to it uh i know that my kids they they rarely watch linear television they don't know what an advertisement is <laughs> and so uh, no, no no and and i, I find it's quite interesting that it comes kind of comes back but a different form right it's not like it's it's actually not linear television anymore because you can pick and choose it's just you can tap into i want to watch this kind of thing today and then you want to watch yeah. so you have much it's kind of linear but it's still you have much more control it's been around it's, it's ah. been around a lot longer than that though i mean we had a uh, we had some friends come when we were living in hong kong we had some friends come over about 2000 2001 somewhere around there and uh it's, it's these twin kids that uh whatever and they came in and we're sitting around the house talking away and the the the, the boy comes up and says hey uh, can we do you mind if we watch some tv sure sure uh i want to watch spongebob I said, well okay uh that's on uh nickelodeon so you got nickelodeon no no i want to watch spongebob yeah okay well it's it's yeah. not on right now i don't have any spongebob what and the, you know he's really confused and he's looking at the remote and that sort of stuff and his dad was explaining well at home Uh, we've got a TiVo, uh, and a TiVo records all the episodes uh, of SpongeBob that he wants to see. And so, at, so yeah. it's like you're creating your own video library, and yeah, and your own video channel. So you could go in and you could select whatever episode of SpongeBob he wanted. And so, and the kid was three or four, and so he only understood, you know, I want, yeah, I, want. I get what I want right That's when I want it, no problem. None of this sitting around and waiting uh, bullshit. Would you would yeah. think, like, I get what I want when I want it. Is would that be of the future of television? Yeah. That's no. That's that's what that's been the mantra of people mm -hmm. watching TV for the last 20 years. You know, it, it, we made the mistake of keep pushing the whole idea of video on demand, on demand, whatever you want, you can yeah. have it right away. Da 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 da. And so, at the expense of you know. Uh, uh, channels themselves. So that's how yeah. COVID did change things a bit. Fast channels are changing things a bit. But as far as pay TV platforms, uh, they, you know, their cornerstones are, are news and sports, I guess, but not so much news because terrestrials are still out there with local, local news. Uh, and so sports are still trying to, you know, uh, mm. football league, Bundesliga, all the other guys are out there trying to squeeze as much money out of uh, anybody that they actually possibly can. So Sky or, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Sky Germany has no choice but to, you know, charge lot, yeah. viewers, right. you know, uh, extra money for, you know, a lot for, for actually watching the stuff. And so uh, as soon as, you know, that's over, then pay TV is in a, you know, a bit more of trouble because they don't actually have, you know, some cornerstone that people yeah. really, really, really need. 
So if you can buy Bundesliga games individually mm. uh, you know, on some other platform, you know, you only want to watch the games you want to watch. You don't have to pay for all the other things. That's going to really, you know, I'm not sure better. if if they already do this over here, but I know that uh, in Asia there was a, a thing like you could buy like a, a day ticket for something for for those for those games. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, there's different places. There's mm -hmm. uh, now TV in Hong Kong has a uh, as uh, if you you know besides if you like Manchester yeah. City or Manchester United, you can buy the Manchester United channel, mm -hmm. which is a 24 hour channel, and they play games delayed. But if you want to watch them live, uh, you can watch an individual game uh, for a certain price. Uh, so, you know, uh, uh, but but it's only only the individual game that's connected to the club that you've bought the channel for. So if it's Man United, you can watch a Man United game for like two bucks that's on good. your channel. So, yeah, so you don't have to pay the 50 bucks a month to uh, to pay for the sports pack. But the sports pack has a lot more in it. So if you like Formula One, as well as football, as well as, you know, Japanese league or baseball or whatever, I've... all of that is there. But I mean, they're they're all riding in the coattails of the one thing that people want, which is, you know, Premier League or Bundesliga. I have one more question for you. And this is what's the future of the Asian market and why should company invest companies invest in, into Asia? Well, uh, Asia market is... Uh, nothing but growth period we have you know you know more than half the world's population is here it's just we're d dissected into uh different skin tones and 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 different religions but uh you know india is a great example where you've got you know over a billion people uh with you know a, a, a well over 100 languages and and well over 200 gods and you know all of these uh different sectors that are built in but uh as far as entertainment is concerned, you've got uh, six or seven very successful pay TV platforms. And the other weird thing about India, it's a, it's a, it's something to look at is that uh, by law, there's no such thing as ex exclusivity. So if, uh, if, if you've, if you've got a show mass singer or something like that, and, uh, uh, and I want to buy the show just because I've sold to Ooh. Tata sky doesn't, you know, and, and I can, I, you know, I can get it too. Or if there's a, a particular football match or a particular football, you know, um, yeah. uh, BPL or something that's gone in there to India, they can't have it exclusively. I can buy it as well. So all of these different places, that's whatever nice. their strategy that's, is. That's, I really that. like this. So, yeah. Uh, so, but you know, the mass Singer is a good example of, uh, you know, that did travel well. So there are some mm -hmm. uh, program formats that, have worked well in each of these different markets, but each of them has treated them in a different way, right? So uh, Thailand, for example, um, had everybody from politicians to, you know, uh, uh, <coughs> stand-up artists and that sort of stuff inside the, the you know, the, the, the costumes, the outfits and that sort of stuff, but then had stretch on, they had uh, uh, lots of apps that they created, you know, for themselves on the phone. Uh, using particular Thai songs that you would press and do whatever, and you were somehow interconnected to uh, to that world, and it became very interactive, and people really liked it. And so the Thai guys started selling that game to other people that bought the Mass Singer. We had it here; uh, it's still going on. Like a, as its popularity is dying around the world, it's just maintaining a, a good status quo across India, Thailand, here, Indonesia. Um, yeah, and so it's all different kinds of music, but it's it's all for those particular places. So that's one thing. So program formats that hasn't really changed. That's still something that you know, and all and all those other people are going out. They're still selling all of that stuff going through there. Yeah, as far as uh, TV channels and and content is concerned, people's tastes are you know, the, people jump on the back of it quite a bit. So uh, the Philippines years ago, um, after, when Marcos was in power, uh, they used to have uh, some kids cartoon show on at lunchtime uh the power it wasn't power rangers but something along those particular lines but people were going home and they would get in you know they were watching the show uh and so they were coming back to work late so he banned the show <laughs> like, and after Marcus, uh you know passed away and got got out of there the uh the, the 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 television station that had still had the rights to that show they also had you know it was all in a package deal where they had this uh uh, Argentinian, uh, um, you know, uh, yeah. over the top uh, soap opera, but they had the, this uh, uh, 
uh, a cartoon that people used to watch like 10 years ago. So they, they had to get rid of it. Uh, they only had six months left. So they took it and they put it on directly opposite uh, their main competitor's news. So at seven o'clock or six o'clock, they put it there. And so uh, people were switching over in droves just to, to see it again. The guys that were doing the news, there was nothing wrong with their news. They just couldn't believe that people were, you know, going, you know, rushing home to, uh, to watch this cartoon thing again. So once they got that cartoon thing going, everybody started buying similar things. Then that Argentinian thing, they played that at lunchtime. Again, it blew up like crazy. So then they're buying all these uh, South American uh, soap operas. Same thing's happening now with uh, Korean content and Chinese content, where you have all of these... Korean shows with, you know, the, the, the Korean actors and actresses are stunningly beautiful people yeah. with this perfect skin and all this stuff. And they're very formulatic. I mean, it's just, you know, a uh, poor girl fall or a rich girl falls in love with poor guy. Again, eventually they end up in, you know, working at the same hospital or whatever. It's a hospital drama or it's a, it's a legal drama or it's a police drama or whatever, but it's always the same thing. There's this love story that's actually interconnected in it, but they're done very, very well. They look great. The acting is really good. Stories are okay and compelling. And so uh, we don't have any real Korean population here, but the, 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 the Korean, we have Korean channels that play this stuff and it's just through the roof. And then uh, for uh, each of the uh, uh, streaming services, Netflix, Disney Plus, and that sort of stuff, they all by necessity have to have very, very large Korean libraries of, uh, of this content because that's what people are watching. My wife, who's a Singapore Malay uh, who doesn't speak Korean, has been to Korea a couple of times. She watches this stuff nonstop. If we're traveling somewhere, she's downloaded this stuff and she's watching it like crazy. Uh, and I don't understand why. And also now Chinese dramas, mm -hmm. they've seen the Korean wave as well. It doesn't matter what language you actually speak. China is taking their their prettiest people and they're sticking them into the exact same things, except they're, they're doing a lot more period pieces. So, uh, you know, they're doing, you know, uh, 1800s or Qin Dynasty mm -hmm. or Chang Dynasty or whatever, you know. Uh, going back and forth in time and the love stories of different people. And then a lot of uh, uh, crouching tiger, hidden dragon, you know, uh, yeah. uh, uh, martial arts style fights. People are eating it up like crazy. So those things are content that people are watching as well, as opposed to, you know, what is being locally produced in this market, you know, for all of those different channels. And so it, normally the platform shouldn't care. The platform should be happy if yeah. people are watching this content on their platform. You know, but uh, a lot of the individual channels just get sort of, you know, crazy because they're not getting the ratings, but ratings shouldn't mean anything anymore. You know, that just means who's watching your show at that one particular time because of streaming. I'm going to wait six or seven episodes first, and then I'm going to watch the show. And if I like it, I'll watch the second and third and fourth episode. It's crazy. And back later. In, in, the, in the beginning, you said you're smart, but now I totally, I, I just realized I totally underestimated the wealth of knowledge and information that you have around tv like the whole tv industry not just asia but really you must watch a lot yeah. of tv <laughs> i do i do i just buy you know i buy for uh and a lot of you know and i and trailers my trailers, wife yeah. gets really upset i just i watch tons of trailers because i yeah. make a lot of trailers or help people make trailers or tell them what's right and wrong or yeah. or even just voice a trailer so you know uh uh so yeah, there's way too many trailers watching. But as far as the future of TV is concerned, uh, it's always going to have a place in whatever yeah. shape and form that it's going to be. Uh, people are always going to be entertained by whatever it is. Uh, people still need to sell computers and televisions and phones and that sort of stuff. There's content that's going to be out there plenty. Uh, so whatever that content is, the styles are going to change into whatever. But that content exists forever. You can go back and you can watch it on whatever platform is going to have it. Period. You can watch... You know, full episodes of Columbo, which is a, you know, a police procedural from 1970. You can watch all those episodes on YouTube. <laughs> so, uh, okay, um, Rob, I'm yeah. so sorry. I have to cut the short and I, I want to have you back on the show because I know that so much more. Great. I'd love to be back and I'll be feeling better next time. So I'll be awesome. more pumped up and ready um, to go. Before we leave, I want uh, one more question, which is what do you want to leave the audience with? Like what's the message that you want to put out there for the creative audience? Okay, well, uh, the creative audience, I mean, uh, 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 it's not dark and it's not the darkest before the dawn. It is 
just fine. Uh, everything's going to be okay. There's still people like me who are old and smelly and fat that are still doing well within the industry. Not well, well, I mean, I still need to make money and I, please, by all means, contact me by any chance yeah. to, to help me help you. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of different opportunities for all of us and it doesn't have to be in the creation of content, uh, it, in that particular thing. Like, uh, as I was saying before, a lot of, uh, uh, places big and small are creating their own in-house creative teams and you can help, mm -hmm. help, uh, those guys mold that supply them with graphics, whatever you actually need, help them out, get rid of advertising agencies. This is my mantra of some sort, fire your agency, find a way that you can take away that agency's work because they are nothing. <laughs> There's come, they are just superficial over substance. You, you guys are the substance itself. You deliver constantly all the time. And this is the other thing as well. Like, uh, I don't know why, but I mean, working with clients, when they talk about their advertising agency, it's all lofty and this sort of stuff. And it's all forgivable. And, oh, they're coming up with all these different ideas. And, oh, it's okay that they're, they're two weeks late for whatever it is. And then you get it. And then you're looking at it. And then the client's going, oh, I love it. You're like, no, <laughs> why? And then you have to pull them aside and say, this may not work because of this, that's the next thing. And then, oh, okay, okay. But I don't want to upset the advertising agency. But when they're dealing with other people, yeah like people that aren't being paid with the same with the advertisers, they have none of that uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, respect oh. at all. Uh, they'll deal with a graphics guy in, you know, in a, in a, in a very, you know, uh, disdainful way. And again, you've got to explain to people, this is the guy that's going to be making stuff for you. That's going to be going out there. He's the guy that actually is uh, making stuff. That's going to be communicating directly with your target audience. This is the last guy you want to piss off. This is the guy you want, you know, to make, you know, uh, happy and help him build up what it's going to so be it, and make it, him. It's really is like you know, they because they pay a ton it. of money to those agencies. Like they respect them more. They listen to them. Yeah. yeah. It just seems to be right. And so, and it's plus, you know, the agency is whining yeah. and dining them and telling them all sorts of stuff and then, then showing them examples of things, which are just, you know, bizarre, you know, it, it, they look great, right. At first value looking at all is fantastic, but that doesn't work for, maybe not this market, but it certainly doesn't work for, you know, yeah. the position of who you are and what that's about. And plus what you're saying is, you know, the, and the, the, I saw one, oh, it's gotta be three months ago. It was basically, uh, uh, for, uh, this other client where the agency had come back and it was going to be this, uh, uh, thing in dealing with, um, you know, their, 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 not their viewers, but their, uh, uh, their, their client base of people that were actually buying their product. And it was showing them, you know, not in the, in the greatest light basically showing that people are kind of stupid to, to make up this stuff. And oh, well, that's a great idea to do whatever. Go, no, no, no. This is what you're, this is what you're telling your viewers. This is what you're telling your, 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 uh, your, you know, the people that are buying your product. This is what you think of them. That's not what you think of them. You like them, right? They're good people. They're, they're saying, oh, no, no, agency's right. Okay. <laughs> Off you go. And they've made the spot. And uh, I don't know, man, it's just, it's insulting. Thanks for that rant. I love it. <laughs> Rob, thank yeah. you so much for being on the show. Our... Marco, nice to see you, man. Way too long. Been too, way let's, too long. Let's make yeah. this. So... Let's not wait 10 more years. Let's do this sometime again very yeah. soon. Thanks for your time. Um, and... <laughs> Got to cover that up. I don't know what that is. So, yeah. Sorry. Lovely to see you, man. Uh, congrats on your success. And uh, I hope to see you soon. And let me know when I the show's on. Obviously. Thanks. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Mark Fun, and hope to see you all again on our next show where we unfold creative business moments.